Typically, retail investors, you're right, tend to think of mutual funds and they think of equity and, and hybrid. But if you're a CFO, hmm. right, you certainly are not parking your money in a savings account or a current account. You are using the products that the mutual fund industry has created on the debt side hmm. to park your money hmm. and still obtain the best possible returns that you can get. So you use funds like overnight, liquid, money market, etc. Hmm. The very same funds are also hmm. available to retail investors. Hmm. So why should retail investors not take advantage of the products mm. that the top CFOs in the country today are using? Ganesh, the words savings and investments, they're used, you know, quite often interchangeably. So is there really a difference between these two? So Shiny, there's quite a substantial difference between both terms. So the word savings itself implies you, you have a certain amount of incomes, you use that to meet your expenses, and whatever's left after that hmm. is saving. Typically, you use savings to meet unforeseen expenses, um, create a fund for liabilities, any emergencies. So your primary objective with savings is really around safety of the money and easy access to it, so liquidity, right? When you're talking about investments, you're actually looking at creating a pool of money that can help you earn further money on that capital. So this is where you're looking to earn greater returns on the investments. And when you're looking at investments, you're looking at creating, taking on some additional amount of risk and securing further income streams for the, for the future. So both are actually quite distinct in terms of uh, terms and objectives as well, and the risk profile that you tend to take on with each. So if I'm understanding this correctly, you are saying that when we save money, we're not essentially doing anything for it to grow, right? Yeah, so um, typically when you think about savings, most people tend to put their money in their um, bank accounts, mm -hmm. in either their current account or a savings account. Now, typically these accounts don't really earn a whole lot of interest, but they are you're quite safe and you know your money is available to you as and when you, you require it. That really doesn't create a huge amount of earning potential for you because mm. you are still building up a certain corpus. From our perspective, it's important that you start thinking of this also as a pool of money mm. that you can use for securing your future. Your investments are designed to get you better returns. Why shouldn't your savings as well? Now, for all practical purposes, right, if you're keeping your money in a savings account, you're probably earning you know, very, very low interest rates. Mm. By deploying these in a more sensible instrument, which mm. can actually create greater returns for you, we believe that your money should be able to work harder and generate future returns for you as well, beyond what it is currently doing in your savings account. Mm. And that's why we introduced something new called Savings Plus. Got it. What is Savings Plus and how is it different from keeping my money in my savings account? So when you typically keep money in your, in your savings account, um, you are you know, uh, deploying it in a bank um, mm -hmm. and you are accepting the interest that the bank provides you, mm -hmm. which is calculated on a certain formula. What we are saying is that is actually a little bit inefficient from an investor's perspective mm -hmm. and you could be deploying that money mm -hmm. to be able to generate even better returns. So what we are proposing is that you deploy the surplus money that you have in any given month into liquid funds, mm. which is a specific category of mutual funds mm. that allow you to earn greater returns. With regards to liquidity, you can withdraw up to about 50,000 rupees within a matter of minutes mm. from a liquid fund. And anything that is needed more and more beyond that, mm. um, most transactions are anyway within your know, 50,000 rupees. But in case you require more money than that, Within a couple of days, that money can be transferred and redeemed back into your bank account. We believe it's a, it's a product that really allows you to make your money work much harder for you. That is the change that we're proposing for people to start thinking about their savings in a very different way. That's why we're calling it Savings Plus. You've said that what we're essentially proposing to do is shift the surplus from the savings account into a liquid fund. Liquid fund is still a category of mutual funds and mutual funds are known to be risky. So why should I remove my savings from a savings account and put it into a liquid fund? So when you talk about mutual funds, there are three distinct categories of mutual funds. There are debt mutual funds, there are hybrid mutual funds, and there are equity mutual funds. So debt mutual funds typically invest in underlying um, government securities, you know, T-bills. Typically, they take very, very low risk and generate also lower returns than you could possibly make from equity, but they definitely take much lower risk. And hybrid falls somewhere in the middle. Mm. So our long-term rating of the uh, of the underlying portfolio would be more than 90% in AAA, long-term AAA. Mm. 
And short term, anyway, it would be a completely AAA, uh, AAA kind of a portfolio. Manish, in the last uh, you know, answer, you mentioned something uh, saying that the underlying securities have a 91 day maturity. So does it mean that anyone looking into the category of liquid funds need to keep their money for 91 days before they withdraw? No. So um, liquid funds is a category of mutual funds mm. which can invest in paper of up to 91 days maturity. Okay. This does not mean that investors have to come in and park their money for 91 days. Investors can withdraw their money whenever they would like. Oh. Typically, we would recommend that investors keep the money at least for seven days because there's exit load in the, in the first seven days. But beyond that, they can redeem their money at their um, whenever they wish. When I keep my money in a savings account, I, you know, it's linked to my UPI. I can swipe it with my debit card. I use it to meet my expenses, so on and so forth. With Savings Plus, will I have that same kind of freedom? So with Savings Plus, you can redeem uh, up to 50,000 rupees mm -hmm. uh, and it will hit your bank account within a few minutes. Mm -hmm. This typically would meet the requirements of most investors. In case you require more money than that, mm -hmm. uh, that money is available within the next couple of days into your bank account as well. So this allows you um, the comfort of both liquidity, hmm. but also greater returns that hmm. you're able to make through your um, liquid mutual fund. I think in one of the previous answers, you mentioned that there are three categories of mutual funds. There's equity, there's debt, and there's hybrid, right? Now, most of us as, as retail investors, we hear of equity, we hear of hybrid, but debt is not a term that most of us are familiar with. And if my understanding serves me correctly, it's something that is more popular with institutional investors, right? So why are we today looking at debt funds? You're absolutely right, uh, Shiny. I think uh, the debt funds as a space has been largely looked at from an institutional perspective. But I believe that's a huge miss from a retail investor's perspective as well. Typically, retail investors, you're right, tend to think of mutual funds and they think of equity and, and hybrid. But if you're a CFO, hmm. right? you certainly are not parking your money in a savings account or a current account. You are using the products that the mutual fund industry has created on the debt side mm. to park your money mm. and still obtain the best possible returns that you can get. So you use funds like overnight, liquid, money market, etc. Mm. The very same funds are also mm. available to retail investors. Mm. So why should retail investors not take advantage of the products mm. that the top CFOs in the country today are using? And I believe that that is really the gap in this market that if we address appropriately, mm. can create a huge new category and make retail investors think about their debt allocations mm. um, in a very different manner. Another factor in this is also that many distributors have mm. typically not paid that much attention to the debt side mm. um, for their retail uh, investors. And I do believe that they need to start thinking about this in a more systematic manner mm. um, so that they're able to serve the requirements of their retail investors mm. in a more thorough and comprehensive manner. Now, debt as a category, is definitely available to retail investors, but they're not looking at it, which means that there are also ways to invest in it, which would already be in place in the market, but retail investors are not doing it, right? So how is savings plus different? I mean, I can invest in liquid funds in any other way also, then why specifically savings plus? You're right. Certainly people can invest in liquid funds in, in any manner that they, that they choose. But generally we have found, and as an industry, I think we have found that investing is like a habit. Okay. The more regular you are with it, mm. the better the outcomes, which is why the whole SIP movement, the mm. SIP movement, mm. um, systematic investment plans, has been so successful because it it you know pushes you to start thinking of investment as a monthly or a weekly habit, mm. where you carve aside some amount of money mm. and you deploy that into the uh, into the fund. Mm. You ideally then also get uh, the benefit of rupee cost averaging. Mm. That you buy more units when the the NAVs are lower and fewer units when the NAV is at a, at a peak. So this is a huge advantage, which we believe we need to bring into the debt side as well. And that's why we're bringing an SIP-like feature, which can be a huge benefit to our retail investors in this product. You mentioned this very interesting thing called SIP-like. What is SIP-like? So I'm glad you asked, uh, Shiny. Um, so when we say SIP, you know, most people tend to think of a monthly debit from their, from their account and they create a mandate for that. Here, we are actually not creating a mandate, but we're actually giving a nudge to people. This is built on the back of a new system called the account aggregator system, which mm. has been launched in India, mm. which allows you mm. on a consent basis mm. to provide information about your bank account details mm. um, and the amount of surplus money that you have to a financial information mm. uh, user. Mm. Now, once that user is able to process that data mm. and share back that data with you mm. to say that over the course of this month, this mm. has been the amount of surplus money that you have, 
Now the decision is in your hands. Mm. You can decide to deploy a portion of that surplus or that entire surplus into a liquid fund. Mm. And that generates better returns mm. than what you would have got in your savings account on its own. Oh. That's really what we mean by an SIP-like feature mm. because we give a, well, let's say, bi monthly nudge mm. to our investors mm. saying that this is the amount of money that we believe you can deploy without any regrets into a liquid fund mm. and generate greater returns from that. Okay, so it's almost like the investor get something on the 15th, something on the 31st, and if they choose to act on it, it almost instills an SIP-like discipline. That's exactly right. Our distribution partners play an immensely critical role in shaping up a retail investor's portfolio. Why would our partner recommend Savings Plus to their investor? So, Shiny, there are three clear reasons why distribution partners should consider Savings Plus for their investors and actually make it a core part of their, uh, of their portfolio allocations. The first is you get a much better sense of your investor's finances. You actually get a truer picture of what an investor is willing to consider as a, a proportion of his savings account that he is willing to make available for better returns. The second point is if you think about the total number of people in the country mm. who have bank accounts, mm. that's north of um, 50 crores, mm. right? If you think about people who have a mutual fund, unique investors, mm. that's around four crores. Now, all of those who have a bank account obviously have a savings account or a current account. And that 25, 26 lakh crores that I mentioned is coming from these um, 50 crore mm. investors. Mm. The more you are able to tap into these 50 crores, mm. the more you can actually expand the, the universe mm. for the mutual fund uh, sector as well. Mm. You know, four crore investors and a population of 140 crores is, is still very, very small. So, you know, um, our distribution partners need to see this mm. as an opportunity to tap into a much bigger base by using a product that creates advantage for investors. Mm. So that's the second option. The third reason why they should really consider this is really because this opens up a lot more, um, I would say, interesting opportunities for mm. our distribution partners in the future. Think about first getting the money of the investors to come into liquid funds. Mm. And over a period of time, as investors get more and more comfortable with this, as they start seeing the benefit of this, there is also a huge opportunity for our distribution partners to be able to do the right kind of asset allocation for our investors as well. Mm. Once that money is in the uh, mutual fund industry, mm. it is much easier for the invest for the distributor mm. to identify what is the right kind of product fit mm. given the goals as well as the risk tolerance mm. for their um, for their investors. Mm. So these three, I believe, are very very strong uh, use cases for our distribution partners to seriously consider Savings Plus as a as another weapon in their arsenal. So then, essentially, Savings Plus becomes a uh, becomes instrument for first time investors, right? Absolutely right, uh, mm. Shiny. So at Bajaj FinServe AMC, you, we believe very strongly in creating win-win approaches and win-win products and propositions. Mm. For our investors, this is a clear win because they get an opportunity to get higher returns mm. on money which is lying idle in their savings accounts. Mm. It also gives them liquidity for our distribution partners. It gives them the opportunity to um, work with their investors on products that they were not distributing earlier. It allows them to tap into newer customers. Mm. Um, and for us as an AMC, mm. it allows us to have a much greater retail portion in mm. our debt AUM, mm. which has not really been considered in the industry so far. So we mm. believe it's also a category creation of its kind. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.